So it's incredibly important to make sure that the customer is represented in thought or in representation Amen. in the C-suite. Um, so... Hi, I'm Matt Eagle, the host of the CX and Culture Connection, the podcast for CX leaders that are looking to drive impact from focusing on their customer experience and culture together. I'm really excited to be here today with Greg Melia, who's the CEO of the CXPA, um, the Customer Experience Professionals Association. I really enjoyed the event in Denver uh, that we were at recently together and really excited uh, to have you on the podcast, Greg. Thanks for joining today. An absolute pleasure, Matt. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of fun today, and uh, I'm really excited to get um, your thoughts, you know, given your vantage point across the whole CX space, Greg, with lots of different organizations of different sizes and industries and both for-profit and non-for-profit, early stage, more mature companies. You know, what do you see as some of the key advances in your vantage point and how CX professionals are driving value and impact for their organizations? I love that question, Matt, because built into your question is the recognition that customer experience in itself is a very diverse uh, field. You know, and so when we think about the impacts that CX professionals are driving for their organization, uh, it is happening at every stage of business development. You know, so if we look at the early stage startup organizations, customer experience is helping to drive word of mouth and adoption and new customers. It's also helping to engage customer perspectives in the design. You know, and as we move further along, uh, many times you get to an established company and the customer experience begins to focus more on loyalty and cross-selling and uh, ways that you can engage and grow uh, your connection in business. But it's not just about money. You know, customer experience is also driving better citizen outcomes. You know, I think we both can renew our passport online now. Uh, it's driving better healthcare outcomes. It's black based driving better retirement living experiences. Uh, these are things that make the world a better place. I'm going to bring it back for a minute to some of the early stage companies. And, and there's a lot of more mature companies want to behave like they want to recapture some of their youth and their vigor, right? So <laughs> companies talk about being like a lean startup, right? So like a, an early stage company is trying to get that product market fit. And then they're trying to hyperscale and they're trying to think like a lean startup and basically figure out the right nexus of target customer and value proposition and get both of those right before they run out of money, right? But what does that imply? Target customer and right value proposition. That's insights and being customer centric. Like, and, and increasingly, the emerging companies that are winning are focusing on experience and not just product. Absolutely. Uh, and then, you know, uh, I think most of the older established companies are jealous because oftentimes those startups can get everybody together in one room. They can name all of the technology systems that they're using. They can have line of sight on key metrics across all of their business units because there's only one. You know, how are we doing as we look at customer experience as a discipline, as companies grow and scale, the complexity also multiplies. You know, now they're monitoring different business lines. Now they're working across different silos. Now they're connecting systems that probably send a man to the moon with technology systems that are uh, bringing in AI, <laughs> you know, and so it, it, it's a challenge. Um, both. Uh, it, I think the big takeaway is customer experience is a business discipline. And within that business discipline, there are different specialities. There are different use cases and applications. And you really need a trusted guide uh, like yourself or, or others that bring skill to the table to help understand the nuances of how to take customer experience and apply it to your specific use case. You know, there were two common themes that really resonated for me at the CXP advance event in Denver that we were, you know, your great event that I mentioned earlier. Um, 
One was the way companies think about value, organizations think about value is broader than chasing survey scores. So survey scores are really valuable as a means to help guide your efforts and help align people and measure progress. But survey scores are one of a broader set of metrics. And a lot of people who got up on the main stage or in the breakouts were actually talking about a broader, more holistic system of metrics and getting the right executive stakeholders aligned around those metrics and focusing on not only um, you know, um, driving the outcome, but thinking about all the right things you're doing on your journey and your roadmap to move the needle on those outcomes. That's one of the things I talk a lot about in my book, The CX and Culture Connection, is building alignment around your system of metrics and then using your culture as a way of uh, reinforcing the right behaviors in the organization to make progress against that. So that was one theme was the system of measurement and getting beyond surveys as part of that. The other was the importance of emotion within that system of metrics and how many advances there are in measuring emotion, which I think is really important when you're talking about experience. I love that you got so much from CX Leaders Advance. And you know, just to bring those who uh, weren't there as if they were on the stage, uh, we really had two focused keynotes. One focused on uh, Joel Trammell speaking to us from a CEO perspective. And Joel talked about the triangle of tension. Uh, he actually talked about two triangles of tension, one between sales, marketing, and products, <laughs> and then one between uh, customers, uh, employees, and shareholders in the business. And that was the one that we really honed in on. Sometimes as customer experience, we get too focused on thinking that we're trying to drive people to that point in the triangle just to customer satisfaction or customer happiness. The reality is we should be trying to drive people to the middle of that triangle. How do we get a solution that is good for customers, good for employees, and good for the organization's bottom line? And, you know, and so it's, it's not about the survey uh, score. It's not about the customer effort score. It's not about uh, NPS or any other single metric. It is about how do all of the things that we are doing impact the organization's bottom line by creating a better outcome for customers and uh, employees and, and for organizations. But on the second side, emotion, you know, it is amazing to think, you know, I, I, I'll age myself a little bit here. One of the movies I enjoyed growing up was uh, uh, Minority Report. And if you've seen this movie that was set in the future, they had uh, Tom Cruise, I think it was, walking through a mall and the advertisements started talking to him. You know, Mr. Cruise, you know, we see that you're back, we have your pants and your size, et cetera. I thought that that was cool and advanced technology. But the technology advances that are also allowing people to uh, intuit and understand emotion of a shopper when they're checking out. The uh, areas that are looking at understanding emotion in the way that people are writing in the tone of their voice when they're talking on the phone, that's allowed us to unlock the depth. You know, when I worked with ICA Production, one of the phrases that they used a lot was to say that the beauty of video is, is that it adds life to the spoken word. And the beauty of emotion is, is that it adds humanity and insight to the statistics. And so how can we think about building in the importance of emotion into a customer experience program? How can we collect that information without an interruptive survey? Uh, and how can we, you know, both design to create that emotion and have in-step journey orchestration to react to that emotion. Uh, those are, are all next level areas in CX. There's a few points in there that I just want to unpack for the audience because they're really cool insights in what you just said, Craig. One, one side of this is the strategic intentionality of knowing the emotions you want in the experience. Um, you know, if you think about a customer journey, and people see the, like, there's a peak and then it goes down and it goes up again. What are we actually plotting? The emotion. The peak is an emotion because the mind is a memory making machine. Loyalty 
is when we have an unconsciously strong connection to the brand and it's evoking emotions with us where it's easy to keep engaging with the brand because it delivers a great emotional connection for us. And you don't even have to think about it. It's habit, right? That's loyalty, but it's because of the emotions that the brand is consistently driven, delivering in those peaks in the experience. And you can be intentional about the um, engineering those peaks. I hesitate to use the word engineering because it's like we're talking about emotion here, but evoking the emotions along the journey um, through great experience design, whether it's digital experience, but actually the people. So often the human to human, and that's why culture is so important, the human to human is actually what delivers those peaks. And, and that therefore there's an employee experience too associated with that customer experience. So there's customer emotion, there's employee emotion, there's stakeholders you were talking about, right? The emotional connection. So that's the strategy. And then the second point you made, I thought that was really important, is the technology and the advances of measuring this with, in a less invasive way is we're actually able, uh, through the you know, listening into the calls or the social media, or you know, uh, now your Zoom calls are actually a, a, like a call center and you can listen to them. You know, there's more and more ability to measure the emotion, but if you don't know what to look for, if you don't have the strategy about what peaks you're looking for, what emotions you want along the journey, then if you're really good at listening and it, it's just a bit of a ready fire aim, right? You know, and, and I think that, that you use the word unconscious and it immediately took me back to my days as a Ritz Carlton employee. And, uh, it had this credo and part of the credo was that we meet in the unexpressed wishes and needs of our guests, you know, and so he's thinking about that, you know, how you design so that the person who's moving through a, a journey is having that experience. Uh, and they're having it in a way that is unconsciously creating that loyalty in the brand. Um, so I really love that you, that you say that. And from our past discussions, one of the things that I love about your thinking is, is that when you design journeys, you're always thinking about how we experiment. You know, and so how can we create a series of different uh, digital ads or headlines or spaces so that we can do mini tests? Because I think we need to move beyond the idea that uh, journey mapping is getting the right group of people in the room and uh, having them act like most of these books back here, armchair anthropologists, you know, who sat down and wrote things. We need to get the data from the field. We need to look at the design thinking. We need to go out and experience what, what our members are experiencing. And we need to try different things, you know, to find out what works and, and what doesn't. Uh, that's really what the next edition of CS is about. You know, uh, we talked earlier in a conversation about like lean startups and about design thinking and being able to work w more agile way as a larger company, be more like a small company. You know, when Domino's became an e-commerce company that sells pizza, right? They run tons of experiments, right? Now, what, what I, I think to build on your point, Greg, that, you know, and, and, um, when people do personas and journeys, a lot of times they use it as a research tool, which is useful to build understanding of what are differences between different ideal customers, customers, customers and how they engage throughout the journey. So you can develop insights to design the experience for specific use cases like a website, a product, or a new store format or something. You're designing a new experience and that's useful. But that's like a point in time, not a scalable, not a long lasting approach. It also misses an Im two important points. The first is what's the same across your personas is actually often more important than what's different. And a lot of times when you focus on personas to understand the differences, there's not enough attention paid to what's common across these personas, the emotions that are occurring across the journey and the linkage to your brand promise is actually what's common. That's the, that's the linkage between CX and brand. And, and it, so I, I, I applaud companies that use personas to look for differences and they understand how to personalize, but actually starting with what the brand promise is, what the experience you want and what's common across the personas, 
you know, that's actually more important in my view. And then the second point is um, how do you drive experimentation where if you know so-and-so is in a persona and you varied the experience for them, you should be able to measure that you got a change in outcome for that person. So you need to know they showed up. You need to be able to track the personas over time. And you need to be able to, to, to drive intentional experimentation to be able to measure, just like I mentioned in e-commerce, what's happening. And the beauty with journey orchestration and the evolution of the data platforms now is if you set up that you want to be able to uh, work this way, you can. Um, you know, Qualtrics has the XID and all the platforms have a similar thing where you're able to link, you know, your different systems like with Salesforce and Adobe and, uh, and, and Optimove and other systems. You can actually track what's happening with your experience data, your operational data and your outcomes against your personas. And you can also, when you do acquisition marketing, look for people who have the highest customer lifetime value. I love that. You know, and I think that that reinforces the fact that, uh, I, you know, I don't think it's bad for you to use the word engineer. You know, I think that uh, customer experience is uh, engineering the experiences, uh, you know, and, and that begins both with the potential thought and with the, the follow-up actions. But, you know, as I'm listening, you know, to all those different uh, pieces and all those different steps, uh, you know, it, it makes me recognize that one of the really important concepts right now that customer experience needs to make sure we keep at the center is the notion of inclusion and belonging. You know, when people feel like they are seen and uh, understood, they are more likely to build that emotional connection in that space. You know, so I love your uh, concept of saying, how do we focus on what's common across the uh, uh, different personas? And then I would add, how do we make sure, how do we make sure that one, we welcome people in a way that they feel personally welcomed? And then two, how do we make sure that we avoid the things that tick them off? That might be my new persona. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'd like to share with the audience, uh, keep an eye out that I'm, I'm, I'll mention, I'm excited that to be collaborating with Greg and his team on some educational content that'll be coming soon that looks at personas and journeys and more modern approaches for how you can build your personas and journeys that looks at what's the same and what's different and build insights that are more scalable because of the way you develop these in personas and journeys to allow experimentation. And one of the things that, to build on a point Greg was just making, is if you understand the emotions you want that deliver your brand promise, you, that's what's common often. There will be nuances across the personas about specific emotions that are more important in specific parts of the journey where there are nuances. But I think it was as nuances versus the, versus the bedrock core elements that drive your strategy, your brand identity, your brand promise, um, then you can actually uh, evolve your approach to listening and measurement and experimentation to see whether you're moving the needle on these emotions that you've identified are important for these personas in the journey. It brings the, and that, that's actually what experience management's all about, is actually delivering emotionally engaging experiences the right emotions at the right time in the journey. And so I'm excited to be teaming Greg to build this educational content to talk about this new way of working together. I'm so glad that we're partnering together because I think that this is important content uh, and we'll introduce some new conversations and maybe even some new tools and thinking for the community. But what I really want to uh, pull out of your last spot there is, is that customer experience professionals need to keep in mind their role is not solely focused on making the customer happy or evoking customer emotions. It's about doing that within the brand promise and doing that within the business outcomes or the citizen outcomes or the healthcare outcomes that the organization has had. And so I think that's a mistake that customer experience made early on where some people said that this was a movement just to surprise and delight. That's only part of it. 
it also has to deliver the business outcomes. It, it also has to help us make decisions at scale. Uh, customer experience is a business discipline that advances all those better outcomes. You know, we can have hearts and carts, hearts and shopping carts, like emotional connection and business outcomes, right? I like that. Um, it's hearts. Yeah. Um, and I, uh, a brand company I worked with once coined that phrase, so I, I won't, um, um, take credit for it, but it really stuck with me. Um, and I think it was, um, actually Jim Keen from General Mills, who was on a previous podcast, uh, was the one who, who, who said that phrase once, and it really stuck with me. What I really like about the hearts and cards uh, approach is you're thinking about analytics and emotion. It's a both end. You can have analytics and human empathy and human experience, and, and it's both and. And what, what's um, possible now is you can actually focus on uh, both the business outcomes and getting more specific as a customer experience leader about how do I think beyond you know, just chasing CSAT or, or NPS or customer effort, which are useful North Star metrics and think about broader business outcome and have my business and my CX efforts linked to demonstrated outcomes. That's good. But you can also think about your role as a cultural change agent at your company. You can also think about how what you're doing is delivering a great emotional connection for your customers and your employees. You know, make, make people proud of the impact they're having, they in, improve that engagement. And a lot of the more progressive, uh, impactful CX leaders are actually now responsible for employee experience or are responsible for the brand and the CX, you know, uh, where you, you have CMOs leaning in and chief customer officers leaning in. So it's both the hearts and the carts. And, and, and that's actually more impact as a CX leader. I totally agree. You know, we're seeing that across different industries, across different companies that CX professionals are being tapped into to help on uh, financial management, on real estate management, on uh, digital, certain uh, in user experience, uh, in-store experience, uh, patient experience, uh, so many different elements, because when it comes down to it, I think you're right that it's not just creating one outcome. Uh, something that we might think about is, is taking a, a, an old tried and true Disney Imagineering trick, you know, which they would design a ride and they'd go around and table and the first person would get an idea and the next person would say, yes, and. Well, we should be asking that question too. We will do this that is good for the customer. Yes, and let's also do this that is good for the employee. And yes, and let's also do this that is good for the bottom line. You know, because that triangle, that set of spaces, you know, you could go on and add the yes, ands. Yes, and let's do what's good for the legal department. Yes, and let's do what's good for the finance department. Because customer experience shouldn't be uh, a hidden department that is running its own assessments based on specific metrics. The reality is the customer journey as they interact with an organization is across all touch points at all stages of their interaction with the company. So we have to step up our game and as CX leaders, we need to be catalysts that design and deliver and collaborate to make sure that that is a positive experience. Yeah, there's been a, a number of um, metrics that have come out over the years about what proportion of CX programs get um, are successful and what are they doing to be successful. And one of the common themes I see most often is that they have they uh, they aspire to have a bigger impact than just measuring the survey score. Um, that those are, they have survey surveys and listening, but they don't view CX as the survey department. That CX is 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 linking to business outcomes and is linking to the brand and to the culture and all the other things that you said, because experience is core to the company uh, and a CX is a leader 
that's helping drive change. CX leader is someone who's got a seat at the table to drive change, and which is why a lot more C-level people are engaging on this and why more CX leaders are more senior and engaging with the C-level. Um, so I think that's a really important point you're making is about the, you know, the, the stakeholder engagement and the broader view is, is, is about having impact. It, it is. And, and it's, let's be honest, uh, it's an uphill battle. Uh, Tatha Dunn, CCXB, uh, uses the example of saying that CX is like Sisyphus, pushing, pushing the rock up the hill, and that uh, your job as a CX leader is to get others in the organization to also work on pushing the rock up the hill. Not because it makes work any easier, but because at least you have a good company while you do it. <laughs> uh, the reason that customer experience is a challenge is it's that it's also new and it's late to the game. So there are most CEOs and other leaders in the C-suite have had official training in marketing and finance and HR. Many of them have not had customer experience training. And so what we are looking to do is to really spark a movement to figure out how we bring customer experience into the mainstream MBA uh, curriculum so that every C-suite member is exposed to the importance. You know, go back to Joel Trammell and his observation. When you think about sales and marketing and product and shareholder and employees and, and customers, the first uh, what is it? Uh, five of those six always have representation in the C-suite. The customers sometimes do and sometimes don't. If businesses want to be successful, they need to recognize that their customer base needs to engage with them more and grow. So it's incredibly important to make sure that the customer is represented in thought or in representation Amen. in the C-suite. Um, so earlier you talked about the broadening of industries that are engaged in, you know, with CX and in, in your organization, um, that there's healthcare companies, there's financial services companies, there's travel companies, um, you have, you know, software companies, you've got you know, nonprofits, you've got a whole range of organizations that are looking to impact the CX and because what you're highlighting is that it's key to drive impact and engage these stakeholders. It's not just for service organizations to drive CX. Correct. You know, and, and I think it's important for us to understand and recognize the nuances and differences. You know, there is learning that can happen across all of the spaces, but the focus uh, for customer experience in a in-person, uh, a event-based uh, situation, you know, whether that is a five-star hotel or a world-class amusement park is uh, fundamentally different than the customer experience that's involved in the B2B work to make sure that a subway system works in a city or that a satellite system works, uh, you know, to connect uh, different communication systems around the world. So, uh, Customer experience, I think, began in the space of uh, business to consumer, and it has developed to also become important to think about business to business and business to business to consumer, but then also into the spaces of citizen experience and into the spaces of um, healthcare and patient experience, to name a few. I really enjoy, as part of this podcast, having a chance not to inter um, not just only to talk to folks like you who have a bird's eye view across so many different aspects of CX, but practitioners from all these different areas. So I've really enjoyed having you know chief experience officers from healthcare and you know CMOs at banks and software companies and product companies and nonprofits. Uh, the head of a public sector practice, you know, so it's been fun to have a range of people and to work with clients like that. And I would encourage people to, uh, to like, and subscribe to the podcast to make sure that if you want to get those types of insights across the industry and, and in particular, how customer experience connects to this broader set of opportunities and cultures at the heart of, of, of that, 
um, then then please do that. And I look forward to hearing your thoughts and and, and having the conversation. So, you know, we, it's interesting. We're this far in the conversation and we haven't talked about AI yet. What's going on here, Greg? Well, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, Matt, I am an AI bot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, it's actually refreshing that we were talking about the strategy and the culture before we talk about the AI, because way too many conversations in the CX space right now are jumping to the tool instead of thinking about the strategy and the application. Um, and we did have, we did have some spaces you know, in our conversation, you know, remember Tom Cruise getting spoken to in the, in the hallway, um, and thinking about the way that some tools are reading emotion, whether that's through text or, or through other spaces, AI is, is not something that is new. AI is a continuation of, uh, technology integration into customer experience that has been happening over many, many years. There are new areas in our new nuances, and they're somewhat hopeful that they're cataclysmically positive, <laughs> but they only will be that way if we think about how to use them. So that, that to me is why we have to begin with culture. We have to begin with strategy, but, uh, I'm curious, Matt, you know, what are some of the things that are on your mind around AI? Where I'm most excited about AI is actually this connection to emotion. A lot of a lot of uh, focus with AI in the low hanging fruit has been automation and saving time, and that's useful. and it And it frees up bandwidth and effort that you can focus on other things. But it's not going to move the needle on your customer experience um, in a in a significant way unless you apply it to personalization or other use cases that deliver a new, more emotionally engaging experience. So what I'm really excited about, you alluded to about the customer listening and using AI for mining information. If you, if you have upfront insights about the emotions you want in the experience, um, and then, then you can actually adjust your customer listening in a number of interesting ways. One is, you know, I talked about the connection and behavior and how a behavior evokes emotion. So you can intentionally create the behaviors you want that are culturally relevant for your organization and drive them. And then here's what you can do. The simplest, easiest way to do it is to ask in your customer listening, your voice to the customer, either relationship or transactional listening about specific emotions. And then whether or not the customer strongly agrees or disagrees that they felt that way at a point in the customer journey, those are closed questions, closed-ended questions, like people think of a survey. But then you can ask open-ended questions also. Uh, if, if you, if for people who were strongly agreed or disagreed about a particular emotion, you can ask them, what was, what was company X doing that made you feel that way? And now you can use AI to mine the answers in a much more actionable way to, um, to uh, help drive continuous improvement efforts because it helps you spot the experiences uh, where you can improve. Uh, and then it makes it much more actionable for coaching of what does this person need to improve? So that's the first thing. Then the second thing is that a lot of the times, think particularly in call centers, or uh, where there's a visible uh, uh, digital footprints, if you will, for the experience, you can actually mine the experience itself and don't even need a survey. And you can build an AI model that actually measures whether or not those emotions were there and what the behaviors were. Um, now that's the more um, frontier that takes more effort and investment to perfect the model. The mining of the open questions in the survey is easier to do and very fast. So you can do this as like a crawl, walk, run approach, evolve your survey approach, and then adopt AI for your unstructured data. And this is not like three years out. You can do this now, but it starts with knowing what the emotions are that you want in the journey. That's the things that are common across your personas. Yeah, I love that. And, you know, again, I think it all begins with the strategy. 
you know, uh, what is it that you want to achieve and uh, what challenges are you facing? You know, AI is a, a powerful tool, but it's not always the tool that people want. You know, I remember a very old uh, story uh, from one of the books behind me that uh, uh, talked about an early custom shoe. And when you put your foot into that shoe box, the computer would scan and uh, tell you that you were getting a personalized shoe based on the, on the computerized scan. Uh, and, it, and it worked. But it, people didn't like it. People liked the experience of having a tailor come out and take measurements of their, their foot and make comments about how nice their socks were and how nice their trousers were and to, to ask them, you know, things. And that became the space. So what did the company do? They paid somebody to measure, didn't use those measurements. <laughs> you know, and then you went forward. The point is, you have to understand what your customer wants. You have to understand what your business wants. And then you can apply AI either to the experience or to the data that came out of the experience or to, you know, other areas of, of efficiency. And it becomes a space that allows us to do more quicker, which means we're going to have more data and more results. And that's only helpful if we have a brand desired outcome that we know to test against. I love the number of times that, that you've said in this podcast episode, you know, and then you can measure that against what you intended to see. And AI can help us with that. AI enables this experimentation. Having a culture of experimentation is enabled and accelerated by the advances in AI, but you need to work on the behaviors and the human side of it too, to take advantage of it. Now, when you say that, Matt, Helen, the, you need to think about the human side with AI. We had a great conversation recently uh, together with uh, CX leaders uh, from uh, Deloitte Digital and CXDA, and, and we did it on, on a platform called Matter. And what was really neat about this conversation is, is we really explored the question of uh, the potential of AI through the lens of uh, CX leaders and through the lens of uh, employee experience or HR leaders. And what we learned is, is that CX leaders are ready to rush forward and experiment, and HR leaders are uh, a little bit cautious because there are a lot of fears that people have or a lot of questions that people have. How will this impact my job? How am I prepared to advance and, and operate in this new world? So we have to remember as, as CX leaders, we can't get too far out ahead of our uh, employee experience experts. We can't get too far out ahead of our uh, customers. I know for a fact that if my mom or dad is listening in, that uh, they don't want to talk to an AI bot. <laughs> you know, it might be quicker, but that's not the way they want to interact with an organization. And so we need to think about the personas we want to design for and, and deliver strategically on those areas because at the end, all customer experience is through the lens of human perception. So one last question then, this has been really fun um, conversation, Greg, um, is we're talking now about like change, how to make change happen and, and the you know, like how fast you go, how do you bring everyone along? How do you take advantage of the wisdom and experience of the people in HR to lead change, right? And work with other change agents in the organization. And a CX leader is a change agent. You have to partner with others in the organization. So what are, what are some of the lessons learned in your view for, you know, for culture and change management that CX professionals should really take to heart to have the most impact in their organization? Uh, the first one that I will say is lose the cape. You, you are not a superhero that is supposed to fly around the organization fixing things uh, or jumping over buildings at a tall bound. Uh, be a trusted guide. My friend Mark Slayton, CCXB, uses that term a lot. Be a trusted guide where you can be a consultant to others within the organization to help them discover and, and move forward. The second, I'll return to, to top of the gun, CCXP, is to be humble. You know, recognize that your, your role in being a guide and being a change agent is to help people see opportunity for growth in, in serving the organization and the uh, customers and their colleagues 
But sometimes that means that uh, you have to recognize that your stakeholders and your other colleagues have different opinions. And so how can you make sure that you work to find a solution that works for everybody rather than what you might have walked into the room thinking was the first thing to do? Uh, and then the last is, as I would say, uh, the gift of time. Keep in mind that, uh, that customer experience is formed over time and takes time to shift and change as well. So uh, to all of the C-suite leaders that happen to be listening in, keep in mind that your customer experience program needs to be consistent and it needs to be given time to have an impact because that's what builds trust and loyalty. That's what builds the long-term results that you're looking for. Mark, who you mentioned, was a great guest recently on the podcast. So I'd encourage people to check out that discussion about trust. And, and uh, I love his use of the hero's journey and how you can be a guide on the journey and not have to be the hero. Um, some of the other um, recent guests that I really um, just want to give a shout out were also speakers also at the event in, in Denver that we talked about. Where like people like Greg Kilstrom or Sean, Sean Albertson and Jim Tincher. So these are other uh, CXPA all-stars that I've enjoyed having on the podcast. And I'm thrilled to be in the, in the um, community. I am thrilled that we are advancing CX together. You know, this conversation has left me inspired. I hope it's uh, left the listeners inspired. Uh, if you're interested in getting more involved in CXBA, we're on the web at cxbaglobal.org. If you are going to have one takeaway, if, if you're not familiar with customer experience, you're going to have one takeaway, visit whatiscx.com and have a video or two that you can share with your relatives that explains what you do. You know, so we, we want to make sure that uh, everyone is aware that customer experience is making a better world. And I would encourage everyone to um, stay tuned um, for more announcements from, uh, if you, again, if you follow us for the CX and Culture Connection, you'll see announcement upcoming about the educational content about personas and journeys and experimentation. I look forward to teaming with Greg and, and CXPA on that and uh, look forward to many more great conversations. I Thanks, Greg, for coming on today. I know you've sparked some great ideas for me and I know you have for the audience and uh, really looking forward to um, where we go together. Thanks, Matt. I look forward to it as well.